Take a deep breath. I'm taking right. a deep breath. Take I'm a deep taking breath. a deep breath. Recording. You're about to. You are recording. You're about, to, you're about to start. This is trial number Guys, two of the podcast. It's about to have Nick's having a panic attack. A new, a new podcast. Trying to start a podcast. This is <laughs> the Beers, B Movies, and Battle Royale podcast. I'm yeah. Sam Collins. I'm Nick Zamboni. And today we have with us Tom Barker. Hey, that's me. I'm also in this. <laughs> Petition to call it the BBB podcast. I'm okay with that. You beloved listeners, comment or whatever you do to podcast on this thing and tell us BBB. about the BBB. They can send us an email. That works too. You can send us an email at beers, bmovies, battle royales at gmail.com. And there's a period in between each of those words. Yeah, that's... and yeah. With Today, we are drinking. Um, please join with us to get today as... Uh, grab your cold one and just pop it open. Wow. That was loud. Yeah. I'm really glad we did that. It was that. very satisfactory. All right, Sam, what are we drinking today? We are drinking the Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest. Um, it's a special beer that's done in incorporation with Bitburger Brewery, which is in Germany, actually. And mm-hmm. we've already finished our beers because, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, looking back on it a second time, I think i would give it three tabs out of five uh just because it wow you bumped down your rating yeah i realized that like i'm not a big fan of oktoberfest beers in general just because like i'm not a big fan of brown ales which that's do you just not trust the germans i mean i do trust the germans because they make great beer and i've had some really good beers by them but oktoberfest is just not the style of beer that i like but it's a it's one of the better oktoberfest i've had and would definitely recommend it to other people. But what did you think, Tom? Uh, I would describe it as tasting like beer and looking like beer and smelling like beer. All around, a perfectly solid beer that I would also give three out of five aluminum tabs. Wow. What a what a turn of events. I'm higher on this than both of you. I'm going to give it 3.5 tabs out of five. It is not the best beer I've ever had. It's pretty good. As a seasonal beer... This is something that I think I could come back to. I'm not even a huge fan of Sierra Nevada in the first place. Sorry, Sierra Nevada. You can sponsor us if you want. Disneyland of breweries. Disneyland of breweries. It's it's okay. It's fine. Don't take your children there. Take them when they're older. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty good. 3.5 out of 5. Can we just talk a little bit for a second about how we just recorded a whole podcast? We did that. We weren't recording. So here we are again. Yes. Redoing the you, entire thing. You guys are going to get the better version. Let's yeah. hope so. We're a little bit frustrated right now. We're so a little frustrated. It's fine. We're going to we're going to switch it up. We're going to have fun. We're going to muscle through it. Ep- episode two, one. one. All right, guys. <laughs> one. One. We've had one, one beer. We <laughs> We've had one beer between the two of us, except for Sam. <laughs> okay. Two beers in. Okay. It's so, a great song. So we're 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 definitely recording now. I can see it happening. But we're in the section where we're gonna talk about our B movie. Ooh. And that's particularly why Tom is here today that's with me. us to really, really help us get down to the nitty gritty of this the fantastically details. beautiful train wreck of a movie. Mm. Um I it, wouldn't call it a train wreck. Well, there's a train in it. There is a train. <laughs> <laughs> space train a space train yes a space train so beers b movies battle royales b movie the transformers the movie they're very specific or the transformers the movie yes. however you know however however you say it but it's the i must protect us <laughs> <laughs> the transformers the movie 1986 yes was the year that it was released that's the truth Took place in 2005. That's the okay. truth. Is the timeline of that movie. It is now 2019. That's now the past. 2005. <laughs> 2000... Keeping score at home. <laughs> 2005 is a long time ago now. Um, so, Tom, do yes. you want to kind of walk us through this incredible... Well, actually, let me talk a little about the players in this movie for oh, a second. Oh, the players. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Transform- The Transformers, the movie... Uh, is an animated movie uh, filmed in 1986. Oh, it wasn't filmed. <laughs> that, that's it was created yeah. in 1986. Uh, it 
was preceded by the Transformers, the TV show, which is also animated. That's correct. Um, I'm not sure how many seasons there were before the movie, but there were, two. there were two seasons before the movie. You have our hero, Optimus Prime, who's the leader of the Autobots, which are basically the good guys. You have Megatron, the leader of the Decepticons, which are essentially the bad guys. Mm. There's no essential about it. They're just the yeah. bad guys. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some, you know, people out there that politically would argue differently. Ah, uh, the politics um, of Cybertron. <laughs> I, I know that deep in the comic lore, there is like an actual reason for the war. But as far as this movie is concerned, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get into the political uh, leanings of Decepticons. I, I have grown up on the Transformers, and I have actually done research into what the hell their war is actually about. I genuinely don't know. <laughs> is it not about Energon? Um, it's got something, it's, it actually, honestly, I think it actually has to do with Megatron is trying to make Cybertron great again. <laughs> oh my God. I actually think that's more or less what it's about. And that, so that was, like, that was like, uh, uh, 007, I think when they established that. So if we look at the Transformers, the movie mm -hmm. as a kind of cautionary tale. Oh yes. Could we frame it completely differently? What would it caution us against? Make <laughs> make John great again. Make mega. Cy make Cybertron <laughs> great again. Cybertron mega again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, the Transformers, the movie. Uh, basically, you have the Autobots and the Decepticons bringing their war to Earth once again um, over what is the city called? Uh, Autobot City. <laughs> yeah. A little on the, the nose. Yes, uh, the aptly named Autobot City. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, the city itself transforms. No. No, they can't. <laughs> what are you talking about? They do it. They, like, push the button and they do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Happens in the movie. <laughs> That's incredible. I missed that part, obviously. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, Tom. Yes? Now that we have kind of the structure of that. Oh, mm. I can't, I can't not talk about Orson Welles. Oh, yes, Orson Welles. Orson One of my Welles. favorite historical figures. <laughs> also in this movie, somehow, mm. Orson Welles plays Unicron. He is Unicron. Which is one letter away from being Unicorn. That's correct. But he's got two horns, which is different. But he's also a giant robot planet that yes. eats planets. He's, he hungry. He hungry, man. He's hungry. <laughs> There's a scene, actually, in the movie where he's munching on a planet, and mm. it is... It is the same sound that you hear in Minecraft when you're munching on a steak. Yeah, that is, that, that's hilarious. hilarious. What that sound was it's from, the, I was like, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Oh my God. I wonder if that was intentional. <laughs> that like in, in Minecraft, they yeah. did that? I have no idea. Or I mean, it's probably just like a generic sound. I think that's I, a generic I, I'm pretty sure, I, I think that's the Wilhelm scream of munching. <laughs> 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 um, anyways, so... Tom. Oh, yeah, round two is going to be so much better, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> yeah, so Orson Welles basically plays the, like, Darth Sidious figure of this movie. Oh, yes. Um, which, by the way, his voice acting in this movie is impeccable. Oh, yes, um, absolutely impeccable. And do you want to talk about how, how terribly angry he was about being in oh, this movie? Oh, he was, okay, so Orson Welles, for those who don't know, is the critically acclaimed director of Citizen Kane, uh, widely considered <laughs> to be one of the best movies of all time. What is it like to peak at 23, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't know. Uh, that is what Orson Welles found out. And uh, boy, howdy gee whiz. He, he made some movies that, you know, are actually like good. Uh, he made a movie uh, called Touch of Evil, one called The Stranger, The Magnificent Ambersons. I tried to watch that one. I did not like that one. The other two were good, though. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, so this poor man, uh, uh, once, once considered a titan of cinema, mm -hmm. uh, is reduced to, um, uh, what the other stuff that he was doing was like selling, uh, frozen food at this time in like commercials and there, yeah, it's, yeah, you can like look up on YouTube, like, uh, uh, Orson Welles, like frozen food. He's like, like oh, there's God. outtakes of him on set and he's like clearly so upset that this is what he's reduced to. And he was like really angry that he was having the like this was this was the movie that killed Orson Welles, y'all. He died five days after he was after so, he recorded his line. He was so angry about being in this movie, he died five days later. Yes. 
because that's, Cody that's, that's probably not actually exactly true. But, but maybe it's what happened. <laughs> it is what happened. Also, the last movie of uh, Scatman Crothers, who voices uh, Jazz, the Autobot, which is overtly <laughs> racially charged Perhaps. character in that movie. <laughs> Wait, which one was Jazz? Uh, the Jack, black the... guy. <laughs> oh, basically. Gotcha. Mm. I yeah, I'll yeah, I'll remember that one. Yeah, a little awkward. Yeah. Um yeah, so Orson Welles in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy, Spock himself. Which is bonkers to think about. That's uh, true. He plays Galvatron. That's true, Galvatron. Which is Megatron reincarnated. As Galvatron. Yes. As Galvatron. Uh, if you're keeping score at home, keep up. Uh, he becomes Galvatron <laughs> in every cartoon. <laughs> um okay so yeah those are two really big names in this movie mm-hmm. uh actually uh what's his name nope i can't find it we're oh. gonna move on i'll find I, it there, there's a lot of cast in this movie uh john M- M- mashita jr uh the fastest talking man he voices blur dude that yes guy so mm-hmm. annoying oh, that yes. character oh I liked that character. Dude, I, I was like, shut up, dude. Like, I was just like, I was actually very impressed that he could talk that fast. I, I, I would align with Nick here, but like, if there were more of him, I would want him out of the movie. <laughs> um, yeah, so, Tom, walk us through kind of what happens mm. in this movie now that we've kind of laid out uh, the foundation. Mm. Uh, well, first thing uh, uh, you see is an act of genocide as Unicron eats a planet. Uh, you know, great way to start a children's film in 1986. Yeah. They're just starting them off on the right foot. Oh, yeah. Then we get this super peppy uh, 80s montage displaying all the actors that they managed to purchase. I mean, uh, hire <laughs> for this movie. Uh, produced by Hasbro, the toy company, by the way. First image of the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, the Hasbro they decided logo. that they had not sold enough toys. Oh, they yes. To start a new line. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so so uh, we, we open on Cybertron, an old Optimus Prime. A uh, highly respected leader of the Autobots uh, asks ask the boys, uh, you know, all Ironhide, Ratchet, Brawn, Prowl, all these names that mean nothing to you, but mean everything to me. <laughs> <laughs> as a child, his heart was ripped out of his chest. Oh, yes. Uh, as what's about to happen, uh, he asks him to go uh, um, deliver some, some energon um, to, to Autobot City on Earth. Uh, and uh, uh, the Decepticons catch wind of this, so they they uh, they whack they whack the shuttle. They break in and they brutally, like brutally, brutally slaughter these characters. Like guys, they decided that in order to sell more toys, they just needed to kill all the old characters, <laughs> <laughs> and not not in like an off screen kind of way. Like at one point, I think Starscream like shoots uh, a, a, a transformer prowl like a major character in the show and like his eyes turn off and red steam comes out of his mouth it's brutal yeah it's you know you can be a whole lot more explicit when there are robots oh yeah and it's animated Mm -hmm. they're pretty explicit (laughs) (laughs) i think there's a scene where optimus prime gets shot in the gut like five times oh yeah just is like you know spewing his guts all over the place oh oh, yeah nuts and bolts yeah (laughs) it sparks (laughs) um so, so uh, one thing leads to another. The Decepticons attack the Autobot city. Uh, at one point, Megatron actually screams, "Let the slaughter begin!" <laughs> <laughs> they kill more Transformers, um, and it's it's like very abrupt. Oh yeah, they just casually kill off main mm-hmm. characters in oh, the yeah. Transformers franchise. Mm-hmm. Like they're just you know red shirts from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, and it all culminates. This is the first 20 minutes, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, in a, a big showdown between Optimus Prime and Megatron. In fact, Optimus uh, famously says, one shall stand, one shall fall. And uh, uh, Megatron says, I'll rip out your optics. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm watching the movie. Again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the movie's weirdly quotable. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Optimus is uh, not able to, to, to kill Megatron because because Hot Rod, who we've forgotten to mention up to this Just, point, but he's the main character. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I forgot about him too. <laughs> voiced, voiced by Judd Nelson of The Breakfast Club and this movie. Those are the only two things he was in. He was up and coming, and then he wasn't. I kind of think Hot Rod is the Morty character of in this movie morty of like rick and morty yes have a, <laughs> more or less he's the oh geez oh, oh geez. uh yeah 
So Hot Rod. Yes, all Hot Rod. Uh, he's the protagonist, and don't you forget about him <laughs> like we did. Because <laughs> it's easy to do. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so Optimus and Megatron are mortally wounded after their battle. Um, Optimus Prime actually dies, like for real, he dies. Uh, and this was the first time this had happened. So everybody, like children, were shocked. Like, and sad. Yes. Didn't like, you say someone locked themselves in their room? There were reports of children locking themselves in rooms for like up to two weeks after. Yes. This. Imagine like Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender just dying in front of you. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have just not talked to anyone. Wow. And then they just kill off Optimus just oh, yeah. like this. Wow. I went through all five stages of grief before the movie was over. <laughs> but I didn't get to acceptance. I got stuck at, at depression. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and I guess, I guess after Optimus Prime dies, which act, it's weird because like he just loses all of his color. Oh yeah, and, like to show that he died. Yeah, <laughs> and all the all the other characters just like they just disintegrate mm -hmm. mainly because they get blown up. Yeah, and then at the end of the like kind of after he dies, Optimus gives um, is it Magnus the, the uh, Ultra Magnus? Ultra Magnus. Uh, don't forget Ultra Magnus. You yeah. can forget Ultra Magnus. It's not important. <laughs> Sounds important, but Sound, not. That's correct. He's a made-up character. Oh, yes. Like all of them. <laughs> True. Uh, uh, so he, he optim the Autobots, they carry the matrix of leadership within their bosom. <laughs> within their leader's bosom. <laughs> and and uh, uh, with, with the, 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 ma the matrix is a coconut surrounded by a metal ring. And when, the, when everything is, is going real bad, you open the coconut. <laughs> and it will light their darkest hour. Uh, and then Optimus Prime uh, hands this to Ultra Magnus, and then he dies. And Ultra Magnus puts the the coconut within his bosom. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> they're the bad guys, and yeah. they're also in the movie. Okay, on the Astro Train. I want to talk. Train. I want to talk about the Astro Train because oh, this yes. is my favorite part of the movie. Oh yes. So you have Megatron, and I'm going to have to have you do the voice in a second. Megatron is like dying, like he's bleeding out, just like Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. And they're on the Astro Train, which is yes. a transformer that is a choo choo train. Yes, he choo toots. <laughs> choo toots through space. Oh, yes. And literally says to all the Decepticons, You're too heavy. You need to dump your dead and wounded <laughs> off of my train. It's a very Decepticon thing to say. It's a very Decepticon <laughs> thing. And Starscream, who is my favorite character because he's an absolute dick the entire movie he is a dubins he is terrible uh he's just i love his voice i love everything about him he's perfectly awful mm. um just, <laughs> just, just call just, just screechy ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um basically calls a vote and it's an even vote and he still says that his side won about dumping the dead bodies. And then he basically takes Megatron and throws him off into space. Despite Megatron saying, wait, I still function. <laughs> I can only think about the scene of Monty Python when they are talking about bringing out your dead. And there's that one guy that's not fully dead. And mm -hmm. They're throwing him on the cart. That's Megatron. Oh, yes. Um, so they hurl Megatron into space mm. to be caught by the ether and just oh, yes. forever fly through space. Mm. But that's where Unicron, Orson yes. Welles, good all old is, Big all, Daddy, comes in. All is not lost. All Unicron, with that dulcet tones of Orson Welles, says... Uh, something like, your bargaining posture is highly dubious. <laughs> I don't know why that line has always stuck out to me. Are you sure you weren't Orson Welles in this movie? I'm going to take off my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. it's me! <laughs> it's Orson! <laughs> no. uh, Only alive by pure anger. <laughs> keeping myself alive. Uh, so, 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 old Unicron is like, you got to get rid of that Matrix. I don't like it. I don't like the look of it. <laughs> I'm going to turn you into a different guy. <laughs> and then you're going to go, you're going to go rip open Ultra Magnus <laughs> and squish that thing. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Megatron gets turned into Galvatron, who is voiced by Leonard Nimoy of uh, Star Trek. Old Spock himself. Live long and prosper. Yes, but he doesn't say things like that. He says things like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he kills people. And then he does that. Perfect. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> I can't remember anything that he says. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, uh, so then um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speed out the summary a little bit here. Uh, uh, they go attack the Autobots. Uh, they fight some more. At one point, uh, the Autobots uh, split up. Uh, some of them end up uh, on the junk planet, the planet of junk. Uh, where they meet Rekgar, uh, the the junk transformer, voiced by Eric Idle of Monty Python. Uh, speaking of yeah. uh, fame, and they sing a Weird Al song, and they all dance. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Scene. That's real. That's a scene in the movie. The song "Dare to Be Stupid." Weird Al wrote it for the movie. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a weird ball. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, alternately, uh, old Hot Rod, uh, everyone's favorite. Whom we don't forget about, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and his boy Cup, his mentor. They they land on uh, uh, the Quintesson planet. They're Quintessons because they have five heads. <laughs> you totally see? Yes. Oh yes. Wow. They end up in a kangaroo court, and at one point. Cup says, "Ba weep, grana weep, ninibon." It's the universal <laughs> greeting. Uh, 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 boys, Could you say that again? Ba weep, grana weep, ninibon. Wow, uh, boys, you try you you got you got a, a lady you want to you want to talk to. <laughs> uh, let me know, let me know how it goes. <laughs> Just with the ba weep, ba ninibon. <laughs> Just see what they do. She'll never leave you. Yeah. So they throw. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> so they. <laughs> I was thinking okay. about a line from Ghostbusters, but that's not important right now. <laughs> All right, so they throw him into the kangaroo court, which yeah, the kangaroo hilariously court. enough has shark decons. Yes, yeah, the shark decons. Don't forget about the shark decons. Who are cons, but also <laughs> sharks. Okay, so going back to like the types of cons, there are like a million different types of mm-hmm. like Decepticon. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's a part in the movie where you have. The Constructicons mm. and the Decepticons have like a vote, <laughs> and like a racially like charged comment is made about the Constructicons being the inferior race. So there's definitely a race war kind of vibe about mm. the Transformers, the movie. Yes, um, that uh, kind of comes deep, back and forth throughout the whole deep, deep undertones. Yeah, <laughs> deep, deep undertones. It's the eighties. Oh yeah, no one, no one was sensing. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so what's going on now? Uh, 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 they're in the kangaroo court, and the one the one Quintesson says to the other, uh, "Are they guilty or innocent?" And then the other one goes, "Well, they're innocent." So then, naturally, <laughs> drop them in the tank. Yeah, they try to execute them. <laughs> Still throw them into I've, the shark. Guns. I've always been bothered by this, ladies and gentlemen. If anyone can understands this scene, email Sam and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Tom doesn't want to know. I lie awake every night. <laughs> I will rely on them to tell me. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, they somehow escape um, by saying, bye, weep, grotto, weep, mini bye. <laughs> uh, get out of there. Also, guys, we forgot the Dinobots. They're, they're, oh, they're the are Dinobots. Bots. They're Autobots. Who are also dinosaurs. I forgot about them. And they're We're very arrogant. That's true. <laughs> uh, they've been around a while. Well, if your name is as cool as Grimlock. That yeah. is a pretty cool name. Yeah. That is undeniably a cool name. Mm. Does I, he die? No, he no, lives. He, okay. He gets to live. Okay. I thought they died at the beginning of the movie, but then they brought him back. Yeah. They do get pretty thrown around yeah. by the Decepticons. They, they, the they get absolutely trashed. I, I forgot they were in the movie because there's so many What's characters. What's that guy's name? Movie. Devastator. Who's oh, like Devastator. Enormous. And oh, like yeah. Just takes on all the Dinobots by itself. Oh, yeah. He's the the Constructicon. Uh, all the Constructicons uh, fuse to become him. I missed that part. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. Yep. So so then, uh, uh, long long story short, the Autobots get back together. Unicron's like, I'm gonna eat Cybertron now because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then uh, they all uh, go inside Unicron, and a uh, 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 hot rod opes. Uh, he he gets the Matrix of Leadership somewhere in there, and he opes it. And um, oh, I forgot. At one point, uh, Ultra Magnus gets like drawn and quartered <laughs> because there wasn't enough violence in this movie. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> that, that's 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 how a uh, hot rod gets the Matrix of Leadership. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> You can't handle this. So. <laughs> uh, oh, Galvatron does it, and then uh, Hot Rod steals it back from him, and then he opes the coconut, um, and then it blows up Unicron, and uh, it turns Hot Rod into, get this, Rodimus Prime. If I, if you had never seen Transformers and you heard. 
the name Rodimus Prime, you would immediately assume that was a stripper name. A male stripper. It isn't already? I, it might be. You might have a really enthusiastic male stripper that just grew up on Transformers and just, he took that away and it forever stuck with him. Also, that name is so close to Optimus Prime, it's like <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Well, that's how you sell toys, Sam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, and then the movie immediately ends, almost immediately after that. Yeah. Uh, like, like Unicron blows up, and then uh, Hot Rod goes, uh, to all or one. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> and then the, then the credits roll. Oh, man. The, l- let's just talk about how, what, like, what makes this a B movie, oh, and yes. like, what makes this such a great movie at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it was the music. Uh, mm. It's, your straight up 80s like rock uh just like big space odyssey metal um doesn't necessarily (laughs) match anything that goes on in the movie but it's it's fantastic and undeniably a good score um i think you know you could argue that that's the best part of the movie is the music that was it for me Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think i think there's a lot to find that is wrong with this movie Mm. Yeah, I definitely was jamming toward the with the music of the movie, and I mean, at the beginning of the movie when uh, Unicron eats the planet, it starts off with some like some jamming eighties music. Unicron eats the planet, and then it continues with the jam music. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, just genocide. We're just gonna cheer that on. Um, okay, and that's kind of like gen like the music is like you're just like pumping the whole time, mm. and it's fun. And I mean, the movie is like a just a fun movie overall. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there's nothing really that sticks out to me that's like, oh wow, this is like really well done. Like the animation, I guess, was pretty good for its time. But yeah. I guess there were some moments where it's like, oh, like, like, but I'm also coming from 2019, so it's kind of hard to judge. Yeah, um, it's very, uh, it's very anime. Oh yes, like it takes directly from the anime at the time, um, which is like really good art actually even mm-hmm. though there's like tons of inconsistencies oh yeah throughout like the frames like <laughs> stuff disappears and shows up throughout the movie yeah um a lot of you know continuity issues throughout the movie oh yes um, but yeah what were your thoughts tom uh i mean i the movie is a, a beautiful cacophonous mess like <laughs> you guys are saying the music's good it's like weirdly quotable like there's there's stuff that like i sometimes forget is from this movie that i'm still like saying <laughs> like sometimes i just go look out and shout ow <laughs> it's just a random throwaway line in the movie i think the meme world is really missing out on this movie oh yeah they've completely forgotten it because because we have uh, Michael Bay <laughs> distracting oh with explosions. Oh yes. Oh man. Mm. Uh, I think M- go ahead. memists bring it back. B- bring it back. Go watch this movie. Mm-hmm. Make a ton go of memes. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of gifts mm. to be made. Mm. I'm going to go see if there's a Reddit thread on it. Mm. Probably. Uh, uh, Nick, Nick, at one point, I think you pointed out like. Uh, uh, a transformer chokes another transformer oh my god so there's a whole scene where there's a transformer there's a decepticon choking out an autobot but later on in the movie there's like an entire set of scenes where they're underwater and talking and breathing and it just doesn't make sense no the- like first of all they're robots <laughs> like how did they not get electrocuted you know it it makes sense because it's animated, obviously, but there's just so many things about this movie <laughs> mm-hmm. that harkens back to it being just a B movie. And they like, I, I was reading somewhere where like they actually, uh, this movie should have been so much worse. Like yeah. they actually overachieved in like the production quality and mm-hmm. like they, I think they like over, like spent their budget by like 200% or some crazy oh, wow. number like that. But they they put a lot of effort into it. It was still not good, mm-hmm. but like they completely overachieved. It was supposed to be mm-hmm. so much worse, and I think that's yeah. why it's so like delightfully terrible. Mm-hmm. Is because like if you look like if you take the room as an example uh, with uh, and how much effort went into that, mm-hmm. but how terrible it was. It's mm-hmm. one of those movies where like they put so much effort. Like Tommy Wiseau put so much effort into it, but it's delightfully terrible. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of these movies. Mm-hmm. For sure. 
I, in, in a sense, I feel like you could call this movie one of the most cynical ever made because they just it's like just there to sell toys. Oh, yeah. Like they just brutally pull <laughs> off characters. Well, apparently it kind of backfired because people were so angry that Optimus Prime died and like all these major characters that have been with the yeah. franchise for so long were suddenly gone. Like you, uh, mm -hmm. you could apparently you couldn't even buy an Optimus Prime toy mm -hmm. like a couple years or like a year before they even released the movie mm -hmm. so like they had already discontinued optimus prime oh wow and so they released this entire set of toys mm -hmm. and so people are like where's my optimus prime toy mm -hmm. um and like apparently they brought back they revived optimus prime <laughs> later on in the the tv show because people were so angry mm -hmm. and they weren't selling enough toys of the new people yeah um, so Dang. yeah totally backfired mm. they did such a good job with the original franchise that people were so pissed when they killed everybody else. Yeah. Smutty rabbits. That's what all, all that is. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Love the movie though. Yeah. It's a fun movie. Uh, if you, if you, if you like eighties things and if you like transformers, you probably already seen this. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're affirming your decision to have done that. If you don't like either of those things, Probably uh, should yeah, watch it. Don't, don't bother. I think that if you haven't seen it and you do enjoy delightfully terrible movies, uh, this is one that should be on the top of your list. Mm -hmm. This is now like probably in my top five favorite B movies. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to be in my heart forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, like an artery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> this, oh. this is my favorite Transformers movie. It's also the only Transformers movie I've mm. ever seen. So. And it's the only one you need to see. You yeah, don't need yeah. to see any of well, the new ones. I, I, I need to see uh, Bumblebee. Uh, so. Bumblebee is the only, I would say, is the only one is that's good? actually kind of genu genuinely good. I haven't seen it. It's um, got Bumblebee in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and at one point, he no. fights another robot. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah, and Optimus Prime is in it briefly. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it? Yeah. Oh, oh, there's Sounds some like other stuff. Every okay. plot, to every single Transformers <laughs> thing ever. Probably won't watch it. Maybe I will. I don't. I, it's it's not bad. Okay. John Cena's in it. <laughs> you're, you're not helping my case <laughs> to watch it. I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't even be able to see him. So you didn't get that. What? Okay. What? <laughs> Someone listening will get that joke. Okay. Moving on. So, any any other thoughts about the Transformers the movie? I feel like we've yeah. I've Go watch it. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Shoot us an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now on to our battle royale section. This is kind of where everything's up for grabs. We can talk about whatever we want, which is great because why put us in a box? Why tell us what we got to talk about? Don't tell me what I want to talk about. All right. So well, Sam, you kind of already told ourselves what we're going to talk about by saying to talk about what shut up tom <laughs> sam what do you want to talk about uh, uh i guess well, i want to talk about some battle royales which sticking to the theme of podcasts they'll play a lot of apex they have a new season new map um new hero what's called world's end world's end uh ice and fire map it's just a lot bigger than uh i can't remember the what the actual original map is but king's canyon king's canyon Man, and, I don't even play it as much as you. Dude, I was just in one ear out the other. Like, <laughs> unless it relates to my emotions, I'm not going to remember it. But, yeah, it's uh, it's fun. And, like, they have some... They've improved on some things with the ranking system. And Do you like Crypto? The new, uh, new legend? Not really. I don't like playing him, but I've played with some people who are good Cryptos. And it's really good to kind of have that utility. All right, and, give, give me a hot take. <laughs> My initial reaction when Crypto came out was, oh God, Bloodhound's even more useless than he was before. What uh, do you think? I think Bloodhound is... I think Crypto and Bloodhound are equally bad. <laughs> but... Because Crypto has this ability where he can EMP and that basically gets gets everyone's shields down. and it makes causes, Watson even worse. Yeah, and it causes like everyone to slow down, but also it affects your teammates, which has like killed me a few times and I'm really mad at my teammates for doing that. Wow. But I didn't know that. It's like I feel like this is a, like the actual class is not very team oriented. It's very much like a 
like that you're playing this. What is it like the recon class? Yeah, it's recon, but like as if you're in the recon, then you're not helping out with. Whereas with Bloodhound, if you're reconning, you're still helping your team by moving around. Yeah, and Bloodhound's like ultimate is probably one of my favorites. Yeah, so like. I just don't like the character that much. I haven't really seen people. I've seen like one person play him really well, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And there's a new event coming out for Halloween, some new skins, and there's a new event which is basically a free for all, and it's like the mini game Halo Zombies, where at the end of the end of the match, like everyone becomes a zombie and is trying to kill the top ten basically, and I'm excited to play for play that. That's and, crazy. It's like, I don't know. I I want to play it like right now. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, I love the game type zombies in Halo, and like seeing that in Apex with sixty players, it's just like, <laughs> it's gonna be insane. Yeah. Like, and I'm yeah, it's I'm really stoked to play it. I probably won't play it tonight just because it's getting late. <laughs> but I'm yeah. I'm also. It's been interesting to see what's going on in the Fortnite world, even though I could care less about Fortnite. Fortnite is canceled. Yeah, it was closed down for three days. They ended after 10 seasons of Fortnite. They had this climactic end where the whole world, the battle bus, and every character was sucked into a black hole. Mm. And basically the main menu screen was just a black hole with the exit, like an exit button in the bottom right. So like you just, if you wanted to play Fortnite, you just boot it up and there'd just be a black screen with a, uh, what would look like a black hole at the center of it. You, you you literally couldn't play it. Yeah, you couldn't play the game. For three days. Yeah. Wow. Like all the nine or nine and ten year olds like didn't know what to do with themselves for three days. Oh man. The whole internet was freaking out. Like people were like, what do I do with my life? Some people actually took advantage of this and one guy <laughs> tweeted out that he got married to his beautiful wife, had two kids, got a law degree, and yeah, he just was killing life all thanks to Fortnite oh, man. for closing down. Thanks, Fortnite. Very cool. And, and then other people, like, they finally got to talk to the family who's downstairs, and they're pretty cool. <laughs> so thanks, Fortnite. <laughs> but uh, if Fortnite's back. They have a new Fortnite's map. Saving marriages, helping yeah. families. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I, would, yeah, I would love to see, like, like what people actually did with their time that they didn't or play Fortnite. If you, if you play Fortnite, which I'm sure some of our listeners play Fortnite, first of all, I'm sorry. Second of all, tell me what you did in those three days that you couldn't play Fortnite. Tell me anything that you accomplished. Uh, maybe you, you know, read a book. Maybe you, you know, actually did some homework or played a different game. Or maybe <laughs> played a different game. You experienced the five stages of grief, like Tom experienced with Transformers the movie. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe you watched trans- the Transformers the movie. Oh, shoot. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Tell us if you did that. Shoot us an email. If you, let us if know. you did that, definitely, definitely shoot us an email. That would be very, uh, uh, of what is it, serendipitous. Yeah, <laughs> it would be very serendipitous. But it's just been crazy to kind of see the what's going on and how much Fortnite impacts like people's lives and people whose lives who aren't even playing it. Like I thought about playing the game and I haven't played the game in over a year. So you can so, fish now in it. Yeah, apparently. you can fish. You can drive a boat. You can swim. Is so, Fortnite equals Minecraft? Question mark. Yeah. Kind of, they're they're trying to go there, and they got the building. They just got a <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else they need. I'll take Minecraft. But I need it. that yeah, I kind of all I've been doing recently. I've been well. I've also been reading. I've read the book Name of the Wind, which is a great book, and you I'm just excited. It. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about this with Nick and some other guests. This is going to be a podcast coming up. We're going to talk about Name of the Wind. So if you're a King Killers Chronicle fan, uh, Patrick Rothfuss fan. Get ready, because we're going to have a whole thing. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to really get into the nitty gritty of it. It's going to be fun. It's a really good book. I described he, Patrick Rothfuss, is a wordsmith, and the way he uses and crafts sentences is just beyond the scope of anyone. And I'm excited to talk about it with some people. Yeah, I've heard good things about this book. Yeah, they're from uh, Sam just they're, now. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna make it into a live action series, I think, at some point, um, which I'm super thrilled about. Um, I was not on the forefront of the whole uh, Game of Thrones movement. Was never like a huge fan. Never read the books, so I am excited to be in the, on the forefront of a movement of big time book popularity and movie coming up. So yeah, that'd be that'd awesome. Be cool. Tom, what you been yeah. listening to, watching, playing? Uh, uh, well, I'm I'm a busy boy. Uh, uh, I uh, um, um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm on fall break from 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 school oh, that's very uh, nice yeah i managed to uh, get myself sick during that time oh, yeah. <laughs> well, done. well done yeah and i uh, uh i've taken nyquil the last three nights which has helped me sleep but given me insane dreams like, <laughs> last night i dreamed that i had to take care of a banana the size of a tree <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah uh i didn't want it though <laughs> i was like that's what am i supposed awesome. to do with this take care of it <laughs> <laughs> it's your baby banana that you didn't want. I wish I experienced this when I took NyQuil. <laughs> I just pass out. Yes. I don't have dreams. I, I, I just wake up like on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've had very vivid, vivid, like either you're taking care of a banana or extremely aggressive. All my coworkers are mutinying against me oh, for God. some reason. <laughs> it's a very drastic change. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been an adventure, but I think it's over now. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, other than that, uh, just trying to uh, do less. <laughs> yeah, do less. <laughs> For the last few days. Hashtag do ba- less. Back at it and back at it tomorrow. Um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how much of a recurring character I am on this, this uh, BBB podcast. You'll be back. I'll be back. He'll be back. One day. One day. Uh, we're already going to do a, a whole Bionicle tribute hour, so. That's going to be fun. <laughs> all, all one of you out there, we, we got you. <laughs> There's dozens of us. Oh, yes. Dozens. There are literally dozens. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Oh, yes. I forgot about that already. I know. Every, we just talked about it. Yeah, every single bit of lore, I know it. You, you mentioned a year between 2001 and 2010. I'm like, mm, that, I, I think about what happened to Bionicle that year. <laughs> 2004, what happened? Where 2000, that was actually one of the best years. Um, uh, it was a big old flash match, uh-huh. and uh, uh, we saw how, the, how the, uh, the previous three years had come to be, and uh, the elders told about their adventures uh, as heroes. Uh, oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Exciting stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it was, yeah, like, yeah, that was actually maybe the best year. Okay. What's you got for us, Nick? Yeah. Oh, man. I actually got something I forgot to talk about, which I'm excited to share. Uh, so uh, one of the things that one of the YouTube channels I've been watching a lot of is this YouTube channel called The Proper People. It's just two guys named Brian and Michael. Sometimes they have other people on the podcast. They do something called Urbex, which if you don't know what that is, is urban exploration. They go around to like abandoned places like old nuclear plants, abandoned asylums, like old hospitals. Um, they do like a tour through Europe where they go through like these like Italian uh asylums and like these german factories and uh they set off these alarms it's, it's just wonderful like they go to all these places it's like it's like they're in a different world and like you see all these decrepit buildings it's like enormous like absolutely enormous structures that have been abandoned for years and years and years and they're rusting and like there's trees like growing through like all the glass and there's like vandalism sometimes they run into like uh, security and they get chased out or sometimes they run into like uh, homeless people and like get into some scary situations but it's really cool you should check it out um, it's called the proper people the youtube channel it's called the proper people uh, it's lots of fun uh, lots of cool locations um, there's like one that's really memorable where they go to this factory and they set off these alarms and they're like really creepy loud alarms and like people come and try to like catch them and they have to like slip through a fence um wouldn't recommend doing any of the things that they do um (laughs) because it's super illegal but it's very entertaining um would would recommend uh been playing a lot of prison architect Mm. i'm a i like rts games i have been not playing rts games which is really sad, but I am back on the horse. I'm trying to ease myself back into RTS so I can play Hearts of Iron, which if you don't know what that is, it's a fantastic World War II game. Um, I love history. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm trying to ease myself back into it. It's a very, very complicated game, so I'm kind of getting back into that. Prison Architect, basically, you pretend to be uh, a warden and you like build your own prison. You, like, uh, you can take female prisoners, male prisoners, and do all this kind of stuff, and you know, there's riots and people escape and murder (laughs) the warden and stuff. It's pretty fun. Uh, Sounds awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Would recommend. Um, Anyways, I've been playing a lot of that. Uh, I got a question for everybody. Want to hear, uh, anybody watch Toonami growing up? Yeah. 
Yeah. What was your favorite Toonami show? I, I was very interested in the uh, 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 commercial bumpers. I wanted to know where he was going in that big ship and what he was carrying. What was that guy's name? Uh, Tom. 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 <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. hey, Tom. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, uh, and he was like this robot guy who was um, ferrying cartoons. But that was a pretty big ship to carry all those <laughs> cartoons. I think he was, was he on the run from. He was piloting our entertainment experience. Yeah, Tom. But I want to know what the lore was. <laughs> you should look into that. Oh yeah, you should look into that. Bring so it back. I don't. I don't think that they have lore for that. They might. But there's they... probably a really complicated Reddit thread on Definitely. that. Definitely. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, don't remember. Like I remember it briefly, but like. I don't remember that part of Toonami. No, oh, I do. I actually vividly remember Tom mm. and all his mm. like silently weird <laughs> like intro scenes and oh, like yes. transitions. Like mm -hmm. I just want to watch Samurai Jack. Can you? Oh yeah. yeah. I remember it was because he was in like the bottom of the screen too, like randomly, wasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah that's true. I remember that part, but like I don't remember the actual kinda, like. He was actually kind of scary sometimes. Yeah, a little scary. A little scary. Yeah. A little ominous. Yeah. Yeah, he had like this black visor and it was, was always like there. completely expressionless. And he had this like monotone kind of voice like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to show you a show now. <laughs> hey, kids, want to see a show? <laughs> Tune in at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Tune in at 10 and I'm going to show you Dragon Ball Z or else. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what was your favorite show on Toonami? Uh, probably a, a Toonami original, Samurai Jack. It a, it's a classic. Can't like, beat that. It's dark and it's like probably a real, it's a really good animated show and it's just it's like quintessential like it's like quintessential eh i cannot say quintessential quintessential in my like go, like developing mind of like oh like i want this like warlike kind of yeah samurai personality <laughs> which yeah, it's not like me at all. <laughs> <Turn out well. laughs> yeah. I've like, literally out. never thought of you as a warlike <laughs> samurai. <laughs> My name is, I have a nickname called Samurai, though. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Wow, that'll do it. Cause your name's Sam. Yeah, oh, man. I have a lot of nicknames because my name is have, Sam. <laughs> have you have you seen the reboot of Samurai Jack? I've seen like the first few episodes. I haven't like, seen the, it. The, 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 fifth, the fifth season. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. I've heard it's really good. I heard it panders to the older crowd like crazy. Oh yes, but it's, that's fine. It's very that's bloody. <laughs> oh gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, Samurai Jack was like my top choice, but honestly, <laughs> Mobile Suit Gundam was like prime time for me. I loved Mobile, Mobile Suit Gundam. Um, I think I was telling you earlier that I used to have toys and like I didn't realize that the models because they had like they had like the real Mobile Suit Gundam toys like the I don't know who made them like Hasbro maybe. Probably Hasbro. And, yeah, probably <laughs> Hasbro. It's like Disney. They own everything. Not anymore. But uh, they had like the real toys and then they <laughs> rip Hasbro. <laughs> they had the real toys and then they also had the models, which like you were supposed to paint and like set up on a stand and never touch again. I like got the toy like models and never painted them and played with them and broke them immediately and was really sad, but also was tons of fun. That is <laughs> tragic. I used to play with the Gundams too. And I was jealous because I wanted the ones that you couldn't play with, but they were slightly more expensive. Yeah. And on my take out the trash budget, I could not afford those. Dang. So I just got the hand-me-down Gundam toys, which were still fun. Sorry for my mobile suit Gundam privilege. Yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> I, for I forgive you, man. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Anybody got any uh, closing thoughts for us? Uh, bees. Invest in bees. Uh, uh, when everything goes south in 2030, uh, we're going to need bees. Okay, so, so there's there's Tom's, <laughs> there's Tom's plug. I actually Me. did Me. see an article today. I didn't read mm -hmm. the article, but apparently some guy has created, a, or two guys who created a way to harvest honey yeah. without hurting bees. Oh, wow. shoot. And like, I didn't know that harvesting honey hurt bees. Yeah. And I learned something. I didn't so, know that either. I didn't look into the article, but I was like, that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. And I clicked away because that worked. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. We see, we see you need the bees. Pay tell if you're, if you're listening. Don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt, stop. <laughs> see, see, see the bees. You need them to pollinate. And we're going to need those to keep having plants. And the bees are dying. So we, me and the boys were going in on bees. Uh, hashtag release the beast. 
<laughs> beast spelled with two E's and no A. <laughs> Should we add a B to the podcast? Oh, shoot. B, 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 B? B. There's B. Okay, yeah. That's the podcast hashtag. So save the Release the B. Save the bees. Yes. Okay, cool. Bees are good. I I probably won't help in that endeavor. Only $100 for a thousand bees. That's a lot of bees to take care of. Yes, but you put them in a box, they'll take care of themselves. Yeah. Mm, okay. Buy one glove to handle the bees. <laughs> so I, I think I would require more than I just would require the whole, one glove. The whole outfit. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. One glove's not going to do it for me. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to figure it out. It's a work in progress. <laughs> All right. Well, when you get it, when you get a little bit stronger business plan, let me know. <laughs> We're working on. It. Sam, yeah. any closing thoughts? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep playing some Apex. Let yeah. me know how the the fright, fight or fright, uh, event goes. Maybe we'll play together. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna try to convince you to play tonight. We'll see how that goes. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> My closing thought is uh, Transformers, the Transformers, the movie. Sorry. 1986 uh, technically took place in the year 2005. Mm -hmm. It is now 2019. Elon Musk, which I know you're listening, because why wouldn't you be? Get on that. Mm -hmm. Where are all the Autobots? Where are all the Decepticons? Find them. Uh, I'm going to start a Facebook page uh, to raid Tesla's headquarters and find all the Energon. Elon, we need you. Elon, we need you. Uh, that's my closing thought. Uh, if there's not anything else, I think we're done. Yeah. Thanks wow. for joining yeah, us, Tom. It's You're been welcome. a pleasure. Oh, thank you for having me. What a whirlwind this was. Oh, oh yes. This night. This was, adventure. Uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, email us if you have any questions. Let us know what you think. We'd yeah. love to get some feedback from everybody. Our email is beard.bmovies.com battle royales at gmail.com that's beers.bmovies.battleroyales. at gmail.com yep. not dot at gmail.com at gmail.com <laughs> if that's not confusing enough sorry hopefully it's in the description it will <laughs> be in the description we'll make sure of that right sam yeah right anyways thanks for listening until next time <laughs>